Is it possible for a planet to have not one, not two, but many suns? Let's imagine what would happen to us if the sun suddenly decided to break into a bunch of small stars. During the search for Earth-like planets throughout the universe, scientists have discovered that systems of two or even three stars are not actually that rare. Many of them even have planets in their habitable zones. Almost half of these planets could contain life. Can't wait to ask these guys about the sunsets. Scientists even suggest that our sun wasn't always lonely. It could have had a companion star called Nemesis. They've noticed that mass extinctions on Earth occur every 27 million years. It's like a cycle. So they turned to the stars to find out what the reason might be. And then they assumed that it was a star that left our sun a long time ago, but it still affects us. Nemesis could be located about 1.5 light years from us. It may not sound like a lot, but it's actually almost 9 trillion miles. That's gonna be a fun car trip, 50 million years long. Anyway, every time Nemesis passes its orbit, it can affect the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is an area surrounding our solar system in which comets are formed. Its existence hasn't yet been proven, but scientists are pretty sure about it. So, comets form inside this cloud and then relocate to our solar system. Even being very far away, the second star in the system can have a great influence on it. But what about systems with four or even more stars? Is it even possible? Actually, yeah. But the more celestial bodies you add to the system, the more difficult it becomes. The orbits grow unstable. It's gonna be as chaotic as can be. In stellar mechanics, it's called the three-body problem. It says that it's very difficult to predict the orbits of bodies in such systems. In most cases, they turn out to be very random and unique. Isaac Newton was the first to have noticed it. He tried to apply his gravitational discoveries to the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. He found himself with quite a struggle. It wasn't easy to understand how three stellar objects orbit so stably around each other. And that's just a planet and a satellite. How about including several stars? I wouldn't envy those who will have to calculate all this. Oh, right, it's me. Anyway, we know that triple star systems are ridiculously chaotic. But what about systems with more stars? They're very, very rare. In 2021, NASA discovered a star system of as many as six stars. That's just crazy. Of course, there are no planets in it, but who knows? Maybe one day we'll find such a system too. In such worlds, the gravity dance is very complex. It takes very specific conditions to hold everything together. It's like walking on a tightrope over an abyss. With all this in mind, let's try to imagine what would happen if the sun suddenly turned into several small stars. Oh, <laughs> we're going to need a very detailed simulation. No, probably even a dozen simulations to make this thing work. Because otherwise, we'd only have a few options. Option 1. We divide the sun into 5 to 10 tiny suns. Now we'll scatter these guys not far from each other. They'll destroy our system in a couple of hours. Yeah. All star systems, including ours, are in constant motion across the universe. So, they'll crash into each other almost immediately. This collision will lead to the creation of a supernova. Our system will turn into a beautiful, colorful nebula. For us, it will happen in just a couple of minutes. We won't even have time to feel anything. And all the planets in the X solar system will immediately turn into sparkling space dust. Um, but it's not the best option for us, right? Let's see if it can go any other way. Option two. Since they can't be located so close to each other, Let's try to set them as far away as possible. And in this case, they'll just leave. Buh bye Their gravitational force is too weak to hold everything together. The little suns will simply leave the solar system, flying into space in random directions. After that, the rest of the planets will descend from their orbits, including poor little us, of course. We'll become a so-called rogue planet. At first, we won't even realize that the planet has gone out of orbit and we won't have time to do anything before it gets incredibly cold. 
What a sad and poetic end. In general, none of these outcomes sounds very fun. Oh, all right, we still have the last option. Our main problem is that we make each of these little stars the same mass. But just take a look at all these multi-star systems that we've already discovered. You'll see that none of them look like a bunch of glowing balls together. Instead, there are a couple of large stars there, and the rest, the small ones, are orbiting around them. So how about two large stars and two small ones? What will the Earth look like then? Well, its orbit will become terribly unstable. We'll shake back and forth. Wouldn't recommend it, honestly. We know what this can lead to because, and that's just crazy, this has already happened to us once. Yes, about 70,000 years ago, a lone star visited our solar system. It was a red dwarf called Scholz. A red dwarf is a very small and cold star. If you count 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit as cold, of course, but it's considered the weakest and coldest type of star, so it probably didn't look that big and bright in the sky. At that time, our ancestors, Homo sapiens, were already there living their lives. And can you imagine? They saw another star in the sky approaching the sun. I wonder what that looked like. And then, Scholz bypassed the sun and flew somewhere further to surf space. We weren't expecting some kind of disaster, were you? If it had happened, you wouldn't have had a chance to watch this video right now. But from this story, we can see what happens to the Earth during such stellar events. At that time, a huge amount of volcanic activity unfolded on our planet. We also got some meteor showers that almost wiped us out. Our ancestors sure had it rough. Something similar will happen on our hypothetical planet with four suns, but on a much greater scale. Constant volcanic activity, earthquakes and tsunamis, Brr. In addition, the length of a day will change, as well as the length of all seasons, and a year as a whole. They won't be stable anymore due to the regular changes in gravitation. In other words, you'll never know when to expect an annual winter or hot summer. And when we are precisely in the middle between two stars, there won't be any nights at all. They'll illuminate both parts of our planet, and we'll have to sleep in bright sunlight. And if you think this is a bad thing, keep in mind that we'll also be attacked by much more ultraviolet rays and solar winds because of our four suns. Their color will also change. They'll become red dwarfs, looking distinctly orange-scarlet in the sky. We'll also get many more solar eclipses, except instead of the moon, the sun would be eclipsed by another sun. It would probably just get a little darker. To be honest, it's unlikely that anything would survive on Earth after all this. I mean, it is possible, but please run a hundred simulations yourself if you want to make sure. But theoretically, we could survive in a simple binary star system. For example, in one that consists of two stars close to each other. Each of them would have to be two times smaller than our Sun. That would be the perfect scenario. And it's quite possible in the future. NASA is currently working on a plan to relocate our descendants to Proxima Centauri b. That's a planet near the closest star system to our Sun, Alpha Centauri. And who knows, maybe one day in the future, we'll really move there. Then we'll see what it's like to live with several suns. What would the Earth look like if it was born in another solar system? I did a little research for you to find out and the results were surprisingly wholesome. There are some warm tropics, strong winds, and giant dragonflies. But okay, let me explain from the very beginning. Since 1995, NASA has discovered more than 4,100 planets outside the solar system. Unfortunately, most of them are either flying ice balls like Neptune or gas giants like Jupiter but there are still as many as 161 planets similar to our Earth. And one of them is very close to us in the Alpha Centauri constellation. There are three stars in this constellation. Two of them are called Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, you've probably seen them. They're very bright. Because of that, they look like one big star. They rotate around each other very slowly. 
and there's the third star, chilling around not far from them. It's a teeny tiny red dwarf, Proxima Centauri. It got its name because of its proximity to our Sun. This star is the most interesting one, so let's talk more about it. Proxima Centauri is only 4.5 light years away from us. Oh, and one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Yep. If we went there, it would have taken just a little over 165,000 years of traveling in a space shuttle. Oh, you think that's a lot? For the universe, it's like checking on your fridge. Proxima Centauri is much lighter and much smaller than the Sun. It's also two times colder than the Sun, with a temperature of 3,000 Kelvin. That's why we can't see it without a telescope. On the bright side, though, it will burn for trillions of years. And you don't have to worry that one day it will eat us like our Sun. And yes, our twin planet is located right next to Proxima Centauri. This planet is called Proxima b. Yeah, I know, they got creative with all these names. I hope you won't get confused. It's slightly larger and more massive than the Earth. This planet is located in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. It means that there can be water and even some microorganisms there. Yes, it's possible that one day we'll find some life there. But right now, we don't know much about this mysterious planet. It's probably a rocky planet like our Earth and has a similar landscape, but this is just a theory. Who knows what kind of jokes the universe can throw at us? It would be a shame to fly 165,000 years just to stumble upon a giant piece of ice or something. Fortunately, we probably don't have to wait that long. The big brains are now developing a technology that would allow us to move at the speed close to the speed of light. If they succeed, we'll get to Proxima b in just 20 years. But anyway, this video is not just about Proxima b. It's about what would have happened if life had originated not in our solar system, but in Alpha Centauri. What if we were orbiting Proxima Centauri, or the other two stars? So now, let's imagine that the Earth has replaced Proxima b. I'm going to call this new planet New Earth. Guess I'm not very creative at naming either. First of all, the orbit. The new Earth must be about 25 times closer to its star than Proxima b is. Otherwise, it would be unimaginably cold. Let's move the planet a little closer. Excellent. The day still lasts 24 hours, but our orbital period is very high. Proxima b revolves around its star in 11 days. But we'll make it in just 8. Hey, a birthday party every week? Sign me up! Oh, hold on, there's another problem. You see, Proxima Centauri is a flare star. This means that sometimes, just out of nowhere, it throws out some stellar winds. These winds carry around a bunch of ionized particles, which then settle on the planets. Yeah, our Sun also does that, but Proxima Centauri tries to finish us off 2,000 times harder than our Sun so the radiation levels are off the scale, to say the least. Don't worry, it's fine. All we need are incredibly strong magnetic fields. They will help us create a very thick atmosphere that can protect us from the Proxima Centauri's tantrums. So now it's going to be very warm, or not. Another problem. Scientists are still not sure how exactly Proxima Centauri's planets rotate around it. What if they turn out to be tidally locked, like our moon? Then one half of the new Earth will be a frying pan, and the other half will be some frosty deserts. Oh, it's fine, we'll just settle down somewhere in the middle. Didn't expect that I would ever say this, but it will definitely be warm at the North Pole. And if we're lucky with the rotation, we'll just get a cozy, warm planet. The average temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and there aren't any extreme temperatures. On the new Earth, we have much more water. The weather is generally pretty crazy, some very strong winds and quite destructive rains that can go on for quite a long time, but you can adapt. Temperature changes are much more noticeable in the mountains. Just like on Earth, the higher you climb, the colder it gets, except it's very cold right here at the top. Because of this, the mountains and hills have jungles below and snow-covered deserts on the tops. But in general, it's almost like the Earth's tropics. The flora is very rich, the trees are very low, 
but lush. The thick atmosphere also makes flying easier, so there are a lot of large flying animals, like dragonflies with a wingspan of 16 feet. Uh-huh, moving on. The sky here is much lighter than that on Earth and very cloudy. Sometimes it may seem completely white. But the starry night is beautiful and bright. There are four suns. Our main one is Proxima Centauri. We can also see two bright Alpha Centauri stars. And finally, our old sun, which looks like a bright, distant star. I'll allow you to shed a tear for the old Earth. There's a few planets near us, like Proxima Centauri C. The host star is surrounded by two belts of cosmic dust, so get ready for some gorgeous, colorful night views. So what we have in the end is a little crazy, but a beautiful green planet. I personally wouldn't mind moving there already. What about you? Write in the comments. Alright, so now we know what would have happened if our Earth had been born near Proxima Centauri. What about the other two stars? Unfortunately, we won't be able to rotate near two stars at the same time. Scientists suspect that Alpha Centauri A and B have some kind of common planet that jumps from one orbit to another. But it's probably very cold. Let's choose Alpha Centauri A. Just like on the new Earth, here our average temperatures are about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But now, the temperature variation is quite large. It goes from negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the South Pole to 113 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator. Eh, we'll be fine close to the north. The day is still 24 hours, and the orbital period is one year and one month. It's almost the same for the Alpha Centauri B, but the orbital period is about half a year. Other conditions are very similar to those on Earth. Changes in the seasons are almost not noticeable. The temperatures don't change much either. No matter where we settle down, the neighboring star will be clearly visible, but we probably won't see Proxima Centauri. And that's about it. Of course, all this assumes perfect conditions. Just like on Earth, one slightest change, whether it's a thin atmosphere or a bigger distance from the star, and it won't end well. We got really lucky with our Earth. But even so, the chances of finding a habitable planet are very high. Even with the tiniest possibility, there will be about 15 million planets in our universe that we can find life on. Our good old solar system is actually a pretty bizarre place. Well, with all its out-of-this-world phenomena that we humans haven't managed to explain yet, there are rumors that a gigantic, undiscovered planet is hiding behind Neptune. Volcanoes on Pluto spew ice. And a colossal canyon on Mars can accommodate the whole U.S. territory and most of Cleveland. Well, let's figure out if it's true by talking about the most mystifying solar system facts. The solar system is 4.6 billion years old. So old, it's a senior solar system. Scientists came to this conclusion after they studied the oldest material they managed to get a hold of. And by that, I mean meteorites, of course. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever. And just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind! But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the US. See for yourself. The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. 
As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side, and astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Earth might not be the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. Astronomers have spotted some landforms looking like cliffs on Mercury. If it's so, the tectonic activity could explain the rapid shrinking of the planet. In most sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and must dodge countless rocks that threaten to damage their spacecraft. Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's nothing like the real thing. The only asteroid belt astronomers know about is located between Mars and Jupiter. There are thousands of asteroids in this region, but they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Ah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists can't explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet from our sight. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Volcanoes on Earth are as different from those on Pluto as fire and ice. And I mean it. While we have volcanoes spilling lava on our planet, the volcanoes on Pluto spit ice. When frozen water expands, and this enormous pressure builds up until one day, bang, the ice erupts. In the process, a new cryovolcano gets formed. One of Saturn's moons, Lapidus, has a unique color. It's two-toned. One of its hemispheres is light and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery yet. There's another weird thing about Pluto, or rather, about its atmosphere. First, it rises way higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, for example, the Earth's atmosphere. What's more, the atmosphere on Pluto has more than 20 layers, and all of them are super cold and very condensed. We live inside the Sun. No, I don't mean that we're inhabitants of the red-hot ball of light approximately 93 million miles away. The thing is that the Sun's atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And our planet is right within its reach. In fact, it's the gusts of solar wind that create the breathtaking phenomenon known as the northern and southern lights. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other on the rest of the solar system's planets. But wait! It's not the type of ocean you're thinking about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen, and its depth is a staggering 25,000 miles, which is almost the same as the circumference of the Earth. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. People came to know about Saturn's beautiful rings in the 1600s. But only recently, it became apparent that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the gas giant planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own. But they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky materials and have no rings whatsoever. Our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. Far from it. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion solar systems. And if that's just our galaxy alone, can you imagine how many there are in the whole universe? At any given moment here on Earth, you can stumble across a rock that's arrived from Mars. After scientists analyzed the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places on our planet, 
they came to the shocking conclusion that they have a Martian origin. Since Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, many people simply assume that it's also the hottest. And that's where they get it wrong, because, in fact, Venus, which is about 30 million miles further from the Sun than Mercury, is way hotter. The thing is that Venus has an incredibly thick atmosphere, which is 100 times denser than the one we have on Earth. On top of that, this atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas. These factors make the temperatures on the planet rise to a staggering 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. As for Mercury, its maximum temperatures reach only 800 degrees. Jupiter's moon, Io, exists in never-ending chaos due to hundreds of smoking volcanoes on its surface. If you ever visit this place, send me a postcard. Now, you'll see the smoke from these volcanoes billowing up high into Lowe's atmosphere. The most enormous volcano in the whole solar system, at least that we know of, is on Mars. The size of this monster is almost as great as the state of Arizona, and its height is as big as that of Mount Everest. How did it grow this huge? The answer is simple. There's much less gravity on Mars in comparison with our planet. Even if you're a tiny celestial body, you can still have a moon of your own. Hey, it's not that hard. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid that was no bigger than 20 miles across and discovered the little thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Since then, astronomers have found tons of moons orbiting minor planets in our solar system. The valley called Valles Marineris on Mars is more than 10 times larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. And it's another thing that puzzles astronomers. After all, Mars isn't a planet with active plate tectonics. On the surface of Jupiter, there's a weird region that's called the Great Red Spot. Recently, astronomers have concluded that this spot is actually a storm that's been raging on the planet for centuries. But some 20 years ago, scientists noticed that the red region started to shrink. Nowadays, it's just half the size it used to be. And still, the spot is one and a half times bigger than Earth. How about you? Do you know any other unusual facts about our solar system that I've missed? Then let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go space traveling just yet! We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.